Michael, how you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Just some reactions to Saturday and what it meant to you to come off the bench and play your part in such a, an historic win. Yeah, we're obviously very pleased to um, get the tour off the way we wanted. Um, to win against the world champions in their backyard is never easy. Uh, no, so as, as a team, we're very pleased with uh, the, the result. But we, we know that this weekend will be the biggest game of the tour. Did you have a point to prove yourself on Saturday? No, not all. I, um, obviously, preparation-wise, it's, it's not the same. Uh, having to come in, unfortunately, for win. Um, and I, for me, it was just a case of doing my job for the team. Um, making sure that uh, I come off the bench and um, add impetus and felt like the the whole match day squad or the whole squad themselves did their job. Rossi Erasmus has uh, labelled you reckless and dangerous for hauling up Cheslin Colby in the second half. What do you remember about that incident and how, how would you react to that? <laughs> uh, what do I remember? I just remember trying to get the ball in but I saw that he'd gone down and um, I guess it's one of those things in the heat of the moment, you uh, you just react how you would normally, but uh, he seemed to be all right, he played on the game, so it wasn't that reckless, was it? And what do you make too, the way the bomb squad failed to go off at them, you know, replacing the front right half time, what did you make of the bomb squad fizzling out? No, it wasn't anything to do with them, I think we just had to concentrate on what we can do. Uh, we know the strength they have on the bench and um, we understood that when we came on, we had to make sure that we did our job for the team and luckily we did and we were happy with the way it ended. Thanks so much. No Michael, can I just take you back to the back end of last week? When did you find out that you were definitely involved in the Test 23? I found out definitely on the Thursday, I think, which was, was it Thursday? No, the Friday actually, sorry. So we trained on the Thursday um, and obviously I knew that win was uh, carrying a bit of a knock but um, it was confirmed on the Friday morning so um, I was I kind of always knew that I had to be ready to um, if I was needed come in and do my job and luckily the boys helped me get up to speed quickly. I guess when you're on your third tour nothing like that really faces you anymore does it? No, I think it's just... Uh, as players that we weren't uh, involved, we spoke about that. We had to make sure that we gave the boys who, who were playing best preparation, but also understand that we had to be ready that um, if anything happened, that we come in and um, do our do our job for the team. So, um, no, anyone that was called on late would have been prepared to do the same thing, I feel. Steve's just said win is a bit of a doubt for this weekend, but no one else will be coming out as cover. Does that mean Xander, Tiger or Carl may be having to do a bit of loose head practice just in case? I'm not too sure who would be covering uh, loose head, to be honest, but uh, I guess um, that's the question for the coaches to think about. And as I said, like if, if we need to, um, one of them will probably have a little go this afternoon. Uh, I can't say that any of them would be excited going across, to be honest. How quickly did the atmosphere change after Saturday from, from celebration and winning the game to, to let's get back to business? Pretty much in the change room, to be honest. Um, we came in and our win just spoke to us. Uh, we're obviously delighted with the result, um, but we fully comprehend that this weekend there'll be even it'll be an even bigger challenge. Um, they'll be wounded after that and um, with the series on the line, uh, we know that it's going to be a step up again this weekend. When you think back to 2013, obviously you won the first test in, in Brisbane, down to Melbourne, and that was a nail biter as well. Just because you win the first test doesn't doesn't guarantee you anything, does it? No, exactly. Um, not just 2013, we, we've spoken about in 2001 when they won the series there as well. Um, and Well, won the first test, sorry, and then they ended up losing the series. So um, that was one, one game, that was one part of three. Um, on to the next one now and again there'll be a fresh uh, clean slate this weekend and we know that anything that happened on Saturday doesn't really matter this weekend. You may not be that surprised to hear but an awful lot of people are talking about Marrow's performance on Saturday. As someone who's known him for as long as you have, does anything he does surprise you anymore? I guess you kind of get used to it when you, you're playing with him and uh, you're in and around him every day in training. So. Everything he does on the field is a uh, product, product of what he does away from it. So 
Um, trains hard, uh, works his socks off to be fair to him and pays dividends can come weekend, he puts in performances like that. Um, but no, you kind of, you're still in awe a little bit as well. Um, the amount of work he got through, the level of physicality and just how he's able to kind of move on to the next job without thinking too much. Um, something that he's got better and better with as he's got older. Thank you, Marco. Hi, Marco. Um, how would you describe the way you kind of react when you find out that you weren't initially in the 23 when the, when the team was announced to, to the squad last week? And I just want to try and get an idea of the, the mentality of the guys who don't make that squad and, you know, how much it means to them to try and break in. It's, it's obviously different for everyone, but for myself personally, it was diff um, it was hard. Um, the initial reaction was uh, frustration, and um, you start wondering uh, what you could have done. And but the best thing about it is, um, Gats was very open about it, and I uh, said that anyone wants to uh, speak about selection, come and come and talk to me. And um, and and every player who wanted to do that did that. But as soon as you um, get past that, uh, you congratulate your teammate um, who's got the opportunity to go out there and represent you. So you you get it for yourself, but you also know that you still have a massive role to play in terms of trying to help the team uh, prepare as well as they can. I was sure you could have asked a similar question earlier, but was that in your mind when you when you came in, when you got onto the pitch, you thought, right, I've, I've got this chance now. This is, this is something I have to grasp. Exactly. I think um, having... Being fortunate enough to play in uh, some games before for the Lions, um, I understood that if I did get the opportunity, that I had to make sure that I, one I did my job, and um, but fully grasp the, uh, take hold of it, and uh, make sure I don't um, waste that opportunity because there's 15, 13, 14 other lads that would love to be in my position. So um, I didn't really, um, I tried not to undersell it and just make sure that I went out there and did my job. Cheers, Michael. Hi, Marco. Um, Warren said to us yesterday that when you first came on the tour, he told you you weren't fit enough. How, how did you take that and um, what, what, what uh, improvements have been made on that score? Yeah, um, I think fitness has always been something that I have to keep on top of uh, since I've started, really. So, um, no, it was, it was obviously a step up um, coming into the Lions camp, um, having not been in uh, for the first week of Jersey, I think. And But I knew that um, condition-wise that um, I was in uh, good hands here with the SNC staff and the medical staff here to get myself to a place where I'm able to help the team. So no, it's one of those things where you just, nothing really, um, there's no shortcuts about it. It just takes a lot of hard work, extras off the field with the team around. And he also said he, he adjusted, or the Lions have adjusted your scrummaging technique. What, what, what exactly have, have you done in that area? Yeah, obviously coming here and working with Marcus, uh he's been uh, great for me, just looking at things differently, the way I'm able to set up and where I'm able to use my bind and stuff like that. So little tweaks here and there has, been, has allowed me to um, present better pictures, but also give me a chance to to attack uh, a little bit more. So, um, no, it's been great for me coming here and uh, finding new ways of uh, trying to, to scrum, really, or, or different techniques, really. Thank you. Marco, hi. Is it, is it a, a career first for you to be called out by a rival coach on social media? Uh, on social media, maybe, but no. I think the same happened in... Uh, 2013, uh, when their coach, or not coach, but someone, uh, Bob Dwyer, said something about my scrummaging as well then. so, But maybe, yeah, probably the first time a coach has said something. Yeah, it just, I, I don't know, it just, do, you, do you find it a bit surreal? Are you a bit surprised? I mean, you, you said you didn't think what you did was reckless. So I guess you're just a bit baffled, mate. Eh? Oh, if, yeah, I guess if he was really hurt, then, uh, then it is a bit reckless. Um, but I just felt like the collision wasn't that bad. Um, I saw that people were putting it up and mentioning it, but um, I guess we were behind at the time. We just wanted to get a bit of tempo in the game, so I wanted to get the ball off him. Uh, and if I did hurt him, then I do apologise. But uh, as I mentioned, in the heat of the moment, you kind of just uh, playing and reacting as you would naturally. Thank you.
Uh, just the last one from me. Just how, do, how does it feel as a, as a pack after what you achieved at the weekend and how you want to keep that going? It, it, it's, it's sort of quite a psychological statement, I guess, you've made and you want to keep that going. No, we, we understood fully that to um, beat the world champions, you had to take them on up front. Um, so for us, we knew the challenge going into the game uh, and it's no different. Um, I think we're obviously, as I mentioned earlier, we're pleased with how the game went on Saturday, but we understand that this weekend is going to be a bigger challenge and what we did last week won't matter and it won't be enough this week. So um, we're looking forward to another uh, big test now and uh, it's all a case of getting our preparation right to go out and give our best shot. Thank you. Hey Maka, just um, wanted to ask you, can you talk us through the scrum penalty that uh, you guys won? I think it was the 67th minute. It was such a big moment for the team, or at least that's how it seemed. Did it presumably seem that, that way to you too? Yeah, definitely. I think for us, um, as I mentioned there, the scrum uh, of the set piece battle was key in this in this game. and. Um, in terms of that scrum, we were kind of <laughs> under the pump a little bit in our half. We didn't help ourselves by um, putting ourselves under pressure a little bit. And uh, as a pack, we we knew that to, the easiest way to get out of there was to try and get something out of the scrum, uh, whether it was clean delivery or or um, a penalty like we did. So, no, it was massive for us just to, one, relieve the pressure a little bit, but also kind of get us back on their half. And, and did it kind of persuade you that you can do that over and over again? I think um, we we felt as a, as a team that if we get our process right that we can pose them some some threat in, in the scrum uh, and uh, the very first scrum when I came on uh, we tried uh, but it doesn't happen the first one or the second one it takes a bit going and no we were very happy with getting that penalty uh, as I mentioned to get get ourselves up the pitch a bit.